Hello and welcome to Power Electronics week four. This is the second session or second part of week four. And we're going to split this video segment or this session of videos into two parts, parts A and B. And part two for week, for week four is going to focus on the efficiency or the losses associated with the buck converter. Again, the buck converter is a DC to DC converter uh, where we step down the voltage on the output. In this first video segment, we're going to look at conduction losses in the buck converter. Let's go over the overview of this, this video segment. First, we're going to look at a definition of efficiency and how it applies to the uh, buck converter and other DC to DC converters for that matter. We'll look at the loss areas in the buck converter. And finally, we'll focus on the loss in the MOSFET, starting with conduction loss. We can define efficiency as the power out divided by the power in times 100%. Oftentimes, efficiency is rated as a percentage. The power out is equal to the average output voltage times the average output current flowing through the load. The power in is the, average, is the input vo voltage, which is VI, times the average input current. We can also find the average power out as the power in less any losses or conversely, we can find the input power as the power out plus the losses. There's going to be four main areas of losses. We'll have conduction loss in the capacitor due to ripple current flowing in and out. And all capacitors have an equivalent series resistance associated with them. And that will provide loss. We'll have a conduction loss. Inductors like capacitors also have an equivalent series resistance. And so we'll have some conduction loss in the inductor. During the flyback period, or the time in which the MOSFET is open, we'll have conduction loss through the diode, which will be the average current flowing through the diode times its forward bias voltage. And finally, we'll have loss in the MOSFET. And the loss in the MOSFET has two components. One component is conduction loss. And the second component, which we're going to cover in this part B of this sequence, is the switching losses. Let's look at the different conduction losses in the inductor, capacitor, and diode. Starting with the inductor, we see we have a, a ripple current, if you will, through that. And if we looked at an effective value, we would see that the, the power loss due to conduction is the, res the equivalent series resistance of the inductor. So this is the equivalent series resistance of that inductor. Times the average current through the inductor. Which can be found with this equation, we have to square that current. It's an I squared R loss. There's actually two parts to this loss. One part is the due to the average, which is I naught, as you can see that average, and that is the main component. Another one is due to the ripple and there's an RMS value associated with that ripple. And I'm just going to write the equation. And this is the power loss equation 
in the inductor. Now, for all practical purposes, we typically ignore that one, but um, it's there, and so we should keep it uh, keep keep account for it. The loss in the capacitor is slightly less than the loss in the inductor, but again, it all depends on the equivalent series resistance of this capacitor. And notice we have a sawtooth type ripple through the capacitor. I'm going to write our equivalent series resistance. And the power loss then is going to be that resistance times the, the RMS current squared. And the RMS current of that ripple current is delta IO over 2 times the square root of 3 quantity squared. And that's the power loss within that capacitor. For buck converters, depending on the size of the converter and the application, you may see what are called multi-layered ceramic chip capacitors. They have extremely low ESR. You'll also see electrolytics or, or polymer type of capacitors as well. And I will link, uh, I will put a link in the description of this video of, of how to select that capacitor for different types of converters. We also have conduction loss through the diode. And I'm going to ignore the ripple for a moment. And our loss in the diode is approximately equal to our average times the forward drop of the diode. And because it's only conducting over 1 minus the duty cycle, we factor it by 1 minus D. In order to reduce this power loss, you will often find Schottky diodes being utilized because of the lower forward voltage drop for the Schottky diode. So Schottky diodes have about a one half volt drop when conducting in the forward mode, if not lower. They also switch very quickly. I mentioned in a previous video that sometimes this diode is replaced by a MOSFET that is synchronized to the uh, high gate switch MOSFET and they work in tandem. That further reduces that loss. But for now, let's just assume we have uh, a diode and possibly a Schottky diode. The other loss, and this is one of the major contributing losses, is the conduction loss due to the MOSFET. Here we see the current through the MOSFET. And like the diode, I'm going to assume that current has an average value of I sub zero. And I'm going to subscript it with P, Q sub C, the transistor in conduction. And it is equal to RDS which we obtain from the data sheet of the MOSFET that we're selecting times our average output current squared. And we notice we are only on for the duty cycle, so we scale this factor by the duty cycle D. So we can put all these conduction losses together. It's not the complete story yet because we still have to get the switching loss for the MOSFET. We have RDS, which is the uh, drain to source resistance when in conduction for the MOSFET, times I naught squared times D, plus the forward drop of our diode, 
whether it's a half a volt, 0.7 volts, whatever the diode you selected, times I naught, times one minus D, plus the equivalent series resistance of our inductor, And I'm going to ignore the, the uh, ripple current through the inductor and just uh, use its average value. And then finally, the loss in the capacitor, the conduction loss in the capacitor. And we still need to get the switching loss in the MOSFET. And we'll cover that in the second part of this video sequence. Let's review the key points. So the two major loss contributors in the DC to DC converter are the MOSFET in conduction and the flyback diode. Those typically are going to be your major loss contributors. Oftentimes we're gonna use a Schottky diode because it has a lower voltage drop compared to a silicon diode. Um, the conduction loss in the MOSFET is proportional to the duty cycle. And it's, uh, it's an, what's called an I squared R loss. And it's based on the average output current from the drain to source, RDS. And RDS we obtain from the data sheet of the MOSFET. One of the things to note is there's a trade-off typically between lower RDS and lower Q. In one of the previous videos, we talked about the total charge required to turn a MOSFET on. MOSFETs that have a lower drain to source resistance are usually have a larger channel and therefore have a greater Q and will take longer to turn on. But usually that's one of your design trade-offs is going with a lower RDS, versus a faster switch time with a lower Q. Thanks for watching and please make sure to watch the second part of this sequence where we where we formulate the switching losses for the MOSFET.